I want you to listen to this first before you think about investing in this particular state. California no longer allows no fault evictions unless the tenant breaks the lease. Good luck getting them to move out. There's only a couple of allowable reasons you can ask a tenant to leave if they don't break the lease. One is if you're moving in, but if you're moving in, you can't put that property back onto the rental market. The second, if you're doing major construction and you need to get the tenant out. But now you have to provide the detailed plans of your work to the tenant. Landlords can only raise the rent up to 10% per year. And the security deposit can only be equal to a one month rent and can only be kept for 21 days after the tenant moves out. Pretty much everything falls under wear and tear. So good luck keeping any money if your tenant does damage. Yep. All right, guys, I'm Kelly from Heels, Deals and Wheels Mobile Home Investing Course. And I am back again, guys. I know I keep talking about California, California, California. As you just heard it, it does not seem like California is the state to invest in, whether you're in the mobile home business or whether you're in the single family home business. Okay, so we're going to be looking at a couple of properties here on Facebook Marketplace. Guys, you can do the same thing that I'm doing. Uh, log on to your Facebook, go to Facebook Marketplace. You want to go over here. You want to put in what state that you're looking to invest in. The, uh, I picked uh, California. I put put uh, San Francisco, California. I put a hundred mile radius. Okay, and so uh, these properties popped up. Uh, and like I said, guys, the problem with investing in the state of California is that it's going to be very, very hard if renting is your exit strategy. It's going to be very, very hard to find a mobile home park that allows for renting. It's very hard. It's not impossible, but it's hard. And then when you do find a mobile home park that allows for renting, uh, what's going to happen is that the lot rent is probably going to be through the roof to the point where it's going to be hard for you to get a profit. Okay, because remember the difference between what you are paying for lot rent and what the tenant is going to be paying you, that is going to be the amount of money that's going to go in your pocket. So that's very, very important when you're trying to invest in mobile homes that are inside of a mobile home park, regardless if it's California, Texas, wherever it's going to be. Um, the overage, that is the part that goes into your pocket. So whatever the lot rent, let's just say hypothetically, if the lot rent is 500 and you're, you know, uh, hypothetically charging the tenant a thousand dollars. So that means $500 is going to go in your pocket. And that's the most important part of investing inside of a mobile home park. You have to figure out what dollar amount is going to go in your pocket. So we're on Facebook marketplace. Like I said, guys, we're in the state of California. I put San Francisco, California, I put a hundred mile radius. You can do the same thing like I'm doing. And I'm showing you guys what you get in California, which is not a whole lot of nothing. Okay. This particular mobile home, uh, this is a 1986. This is a three bedroom, uh, mobile home, 60 long by 12 wide. They're wanting $26,500 for this particular mobile home. So we're going to check it out. We're only going to look at a couple of properties, guys. You have seen me do this time and time again. Um, so I don't want to sound like a broken record. Okay. And as you can see, we'll read the description. It says three bedroom, two bath. No, it didn't say two bath. It says three bedroom mobile home, 12 wide by 60 long. Restroom, toilet, shower, tub, closets, cabinets, kitchen sink, dining, living room, area, you name it. It's a complete house. Okay, so buying this will probably be a whole lot of che whole lot cheaper than buying a um, single family home. That's for sure. But look what you get for $26,500, which is not a whole lot of nothing. It's metal on metal uh, mobile home. It doesn't say the age of the mobile home, but if I would have to guess, I would have to say it's a 19... Uh, 80s mobile home and you're going to have to pay for the move as well that's another thing you have to think about um on the plus side sometimes these mobile home parks will um go ahead and pay for the move depending upon what kind of incentives that they're running okay so uh guys this is a livable mobile home but this is a whole lot of money for um you know a mobile home of this age okay would i be interested in something like this probably not Probably not. I would not be interested in something like this, not at this dollar amount. But guys, once again, we're looking at the California market. It doesn't say how many uh, baths it has, but it says it has three bedrooms. I only see a picture of one bath as I look through these particular pictures, okay? You also can't discriminate against someone's low credit if they are getting government subsidy to help with the rent. And a repair and deduct remedy is now legal in California. 
meaning if the tenant asks the landlord to fix something and the landlord does not, the tenant is able to have it fixed themselves and then deduct it from the rent. Does not need prior approval from the landlord. These apply to all properties for lease in California. Los Angeles has even stricter rent control rules. Landlords can only increase rent up to 4% a year in Los Angeles. And not every property falls under rent control in Los Angeles. It has to be two or more properties on the same parcel, and it has to be built before 1979. So, as Pro you heard it, guys, this uh, lady pretty much broke it down. If you're going to invest in the state of California, you better be very, very careful, okay? Here's another mobile home, guys, in Hesperian, California, uh, 12900 bucks. And, guys, this home is even older than the home that I showed you, even though this, um, it says a 1985. I, I thought it didn't tell me the year. Uh, this is a two bedroom. You have to understand your market is your market for a two bedroom. Okay. You have to think about that in the state of California, a two bedroom would fly all day long. And sometimes even a one bedroom would fly all day long because you have a lot of people who might have a, another home somewhere else, somewhere, somewhere in a winter climate. Okay. And so they're going to be going back and forth from their summer home to their winter home. So a one bedroom, one bath might fly in the state of California, but nine times out of 10, it's not going to fly in a Southern state where we have larger families. A one bedroom is not going to fly and probably not even a two bedroom is going to not going to fly in some of these southern states and in the state of uh, Texas guys we have larger families um, a lot of our mobile homes are rented out to people who have like seven seven family members okay so a two bedroom or one bedroom is not going to fly in the state of Texas so you have to know your market when you're getting into the mobile home business and I could just tell guys <clears throat> they're saying this is a 1985 but in my opinion this looks a lot um, older than a 1985 and my students know why they could be telling the truth but just looking at this as I'm eyeballing it it looks a little um older in my opinion i could be wrong nice two-bedroom mobile home 48 long by 10 wide complete kitchen cabinets cl closet restroom shower tub pretty much saying the same thing as the previous um advertisement that we saw and let's just look at the pictures um you know all, all in all not a bad looking mobile home uh, this mobile home as you can see is the middle of nowhere it's going to definitely have to be moved um and so where would you move an uh, older model mobile home where would you move this to um nine times out of ten you probably have to move it to a mom and pop uh type of uh, mobile home park you know a legitimate park a up and coming park probably would not take a mobile home that is this old in my opinion so uh, you would have to shop around to figure out where you're going to move this particular mobile home Prop 33 wants to give local jurisdictions the right to set rent control on any property that they choose. Single family homes, new construction. They can also further limit the increases. This has been on the ballot three times before and failed every time. And there's a good reason. This not only will hurt property owners, but tenants also. A lot of property owners are getting annoyed by the clampdown on what they can and cannot do with their property when they're renting it out. And they will end up taking it off the long-term rental market permanently, some choosing short-term rentals instead, which are not affected by rent control. This will take property away from tenants and not provide more protections. Okay, we're going to look at this one here, guys. Um, this is $10,800. Um, this is a 1984 mobile home. Once again, a very old mobile home. And um, description is pretty much like the previous uh, two uh, descriptions. It says a one big bedroom mobile home, kitchen, cabinets, closet, dining, living room, bathroom, bathtub, all that good stuff. Uh, this is an older model mobile home as well, even though they're saying it's a 1984. Um, you know, it is older. I'm not saying it's not a 1984, but it's older. And this is what you get for $10,800, okay? So you have to think, if you're not moving this to its private land, if you're moving this inside of a mobile home park, and they did a beautiful job on rehabbing the inside of this particular mobile home, uh, we're looking at clean, affordable living. We're not looking at all this do-it-yourself and all this kind of stuff, chandeliers and all that kind of stuff. We're not doing that in the mobile home business. Clean, affordable living. The reason why this type of mobile home probably would not fly uh, with Section 8, guys, because there are certain rules and regulations that Section 8 has. 
Um, and I'm not really sure if this is going to fly. Number one, lead paint. You got to think about that. Um, you know, and I'm not really sure if this is going to fly, uh, uh, with Section 8, but Section 8, guys, their rules and regulations are different uh, depending upon what state you're trying to do business in. So I don't think that this would fly. Uh, it would pass a Section 8 uh, inspection, and I'm not going to go into a whole bunch of details, guys. If you're interested in learning how to mobile home invest, guys, you can go ahead in the description, and in the description is my uh, link to my course. I have a main course and then I have several mini courses and my mini courses deal with uh, how you find Section 8 for your mobile homes. It also deals with um, how you go about creating mobile home notes just like a car payment and also it deals with uh, how you find mobile home parks that allow for renting. Okay, so I'm showing you what's going on in California. And you have to figure out, guys, with all these homes that I'm showing you, where are you going to move an older model mobile home? Where are you going to move this? Because a lot of the up and coming parks are not going to try to take this type of um, old looking mobile home. Now, this particular mobile home, <clears throat> they said it's a 1985 as well. Guys, I'm finding this hard to believe. You can look at this and tell this might not be a 1985. Uh, this is a two bedroom, um, eight foot wide by 46 long. They're wanting 11,200 um for this particular mobile home and guys the description is pretty much the same it's a two-bedroom complete kitchen shower sink it says the same thing as the other advertisements <clears throat> it has a ac unit as well it's pretty much saying the same thing as the other units but you're going to get a lot of older model mobile homes when you are in uh the uh, state of california and then like i said guys i keep saying it over and over again, where are you going to move it? And when you do move it, guys, is it going to pass a Section 8 inspection? Or are you going to just rent it out to a regular tenant? Nothing wrong with renting out your mobile home to a regular tenant, but you have to make sure you, uh, you know, dot your I's and cross your T's to make sure you're going to get a tenant that is going to pay. But all in all, not a bad looking mobile home. Uh, this is a two bedroom uh, mobile home. Like I said, guys, we're providing clean and affordable living. Uh, that bathroom is very, very tight. Okay, this type of mobile home probably would not fly in some of the southern states. But, um, guys, it's clean, affordable living. Okay, and then another thing you have to think about, regardless of where you're investing, regardless of where you're investing, guys, lot rent is getting crazy uh, wherever we go. Okay, and so let's look at a, a couple more properties, and then we're going to call it a day because I think you get the gist of what I'm saying. Here's another mobile home. I guess that green and white color is pretty big in the uh, state of California. This is a 1983. Once again, guys, I'm not really sure if this is a 1983 or not. Um, and it doesn't mention in any of these descriptions whether or not um, the mobile home has a title or not. And sometimes it really doesn't make a difference if the mobile home has a title or not, depending upon what state you're trying to invest in. Some 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 states don't care if you have a title or not. In some states, it is required that you have a title. And then, guys, you have to uh, know the difference between a pre-HUD mobile home and a HUD mobile home. Okay, so pre-HUD mobile home or mobile homes that were built before 1976 and a HUD mobile home are mobile homes that were built after 1976. So pretty much in a nutshell, uh, uh, HUD mobile homes are pretty much built to standard. There's certain standards concerning the insulation, uh, concerning how a mobile home is constructed. So we don't really like to deal with pre-HUD mobile homes because nine times out of 10, especially if we're trying to rent those out, Nine times out of ten, guys, those turns out to be headaches, and then it's hard to um, rent those out. And then, guys, what I mean by it, it turns out to be a headache, that nine times out of ten, guys, especially if you're trying to rent the mobile home out, uh, you're going to have to, you know, be repairing it every five minutes because always something is wrong with it, especially insulation, uh, you know, as far as keeping the mobile home heated or keeping the mobile home cool. It's always a problem with these older model mobile homes. And due to the fact, and even though this is a very beautiful mobile home on the inside, um, even though, guys, it's a very nice mobile home, the likelihood of this passing Section 8 is probably going to be slim to none. And the reason why I keep bringing up Section 8, because that is our exit strategy uh, dealing with Section 8. So, um, yeah, very nice mobile home, though. Uh, this is what you get for $12,500. And even though um, these type of mobile homes, guys, we would more or less sell or finance these properties out. We would probably buy the mobile home very, very low 
and then we would turn around and resell it to somebody else, sell or finance it, um, just like a car payment. Put somebody on notes just like a car payment, and that's what we like to do with these type of mobile homes. These are not the type of mobile homes that we buy and hold and keep and try to rent because nine times out of ten, uh, it's going to be an issue uh, with them, uh, the tenant calling you all the time about something's wrong with that particular mobile home. Let's look at one more property, and then, guys, I get, I think you get the just of what I'm talking about, investing in California. And the lady uh, who I, um, I had the video regarding what's going on in the state of California, listening to what she said, guys, don't even listen to me, just listen to what she said. It's a headache. It is a headache. Uh, investing in the state of California. And another thing about the state of California, when you're talking about mobile homes, guys, uh, if you are trying to be an, a mobile home investor, if you're trying to get licensed in the state of California, you got to jump, you got to do a bunch of jumping, a bunch of hoops in order to get in the business. And then a lot of times, guys, if you're trying to get your license in the state of California, guys, the test is not open book. Um, in a lot of states, the test is open book. In a lot of states, you don't even have to take the test. You just have to uh, pay a fee. So Texas uh, is uh, one of the states where it is open book. Okay, you sit in a course. Uh, for what I understand, the course is now online. They don't do it any in person anymore. The, when I got my license, not saying that you have to be uh, have a license in the state of uh, Texas, uh, especially if you're trying to wholesale, guys. You do not need a license whatsoever. But um, when I got my license, uh, we had to do it in person. This was before the pandemic. Uh, we did everything in person. We took an open book test. We paid a fee and then we got our license. But in the state of California, that is not the case. It is not open book. You have to take a course and then you have to sit for an examination. And the examination is very long and it's very lengthy. Okay. Uh, let's look at this last property. It says C translation. This is a two bedroom, two bath, kitchen, room, and laundry. Um, so you can have to move this particular property just like you had to move the rest. So that's another thing, um, that you're going to have to deal with. You're going to have to move this particular mobile home. Um, this is a 1972. They want $20,000 for this particular mobile home. Um, this is a double wide, very nice looking mobile home. Uh, even though it says a two bedroom guys, it must be a lot of wasted space for this only to be a two bedroom mobile home, but very, very nice. <clears throat> Would I spend $20,000 for this particular mobile home? Probably not. But in the state of California, this is probably a gem. As you can see, the carpet is very nasty. <clears throat> that would not fly in the state of uh, Texas as far as if you're going to be dealing with Section 8. And if you look really, really close, something's going on with the ceiling. So that is telling me that they might have a roof issue on this particular mobile home. And it looks like, guys, there's still some rehab that need to be done. And I don't see a refrigerator anywhere thus far. Um, guys, this is what you get in California. So you have to figure out um, what your exit strategy is. If you do have one or not, if you're trying to buy and hold this mobile home, if you're trying to buy the mobile home and turn around and fix it and flip it, are you trying to rent the mobile home out? What do you try to do with the mobile home? You should always consider your exit strategy if you're going to be serious about being in this particular business. So <clears throat> so let's just look at this last property, guys, $18,000. Uh, this is a 1974 mobile home. Uh, this is in Lancaster, um, so this is a two bedroom, two bath mobile home. Um, as you can see, and it's a double wide, <clears throat> um, not a bad looking mobile home, but guys, you're going to have to pay for the move and you're going to have to pay for the move twice because you got two pieces. Okay. And when you have a double wide, you got to move the mobile home in two separate pieces. So, uh, it's going to be double the cost for this particular mobile home. So that's another thing you have to consider when you're dealing with a single wide versus a double wide mobile home. All right. So guys, this is Kelly from Hills, Deals and Wheels mobile home investing course.